hope you're all well. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a kind of casual makeup tutorial type thing. I thought I might start doing these monthly if you want to, just showing you what my current favourite everyday makeup is. I'm always talking about the products I love, but I'm not always showing them, so you guys really like the tutorial I did during Vlogmas. So I thought I'd start doing these as a monthly thing if you want me to, let me know. For today's look, I thought I'd show you quite a few of the products that I showed in my January haul video. A lot of them were Kiko, and you guys commented saying you wanted to see what they look like on so as well as some blog post reviews, I'm also going to show you in this video what they look like when I actually apply them. So keep watching if you want to see how I did this makeup look. And also just a warning, these makeup videos will obviously be quite simple. They're just my everyday makeup look. I'm no makeup artist. But I really hope you guys enjoy it anyway. And now I'm going to cut to me wearing no makeup and I'll start from there. Okay, so let me tuck my hair behind my ears. And I'm sorry if the settings on the camera aren't perfect. I'm playing around with different settings. It's very hard to get the colour right for makeup tutorials so that the colours I'm using actually match what they really are in real life but I'm trying out a new setting so let me know if you guys like this or if you don't. I'm going to start by using the new Kiko foundation. This is the Universal Fit Hydrating Foundation and I have absolutely fallen in love with this foundation. Kiko say it's got this pliable elasticated formula which I completely agree with them. It's like a medium to full coverage but when you blend it in, it feels like a light foundation. So it actually covers, but look how quickly it blends in. It's kind of strange, but I really, really like it. It covers enough for what I need, but then it also is hydrating, which is great for my kind of drier skin. And it still lets your natural skin shine through, so it doesn't look too heavy. So I'm just using the Bobbi Brown Full Coverage Brush just to buff that in. I always make sure to go down onto my neck. Oh man, I really need to pluck my eyebrows. Apologies for the brows. Okay, so foundation done. I'm now going to use the Kiko Natural Concealer, which I also bought in that haul video. This comes in the teeniest, tiniest packaging. I think I will literally run out in like five minutes, but it's really affordable and I really like it. It reminds me of the NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer, which I use almost every day. It has the same kind of doe applicator. It's very moisturising. It's not kind of drying. So I'm just applying that in all the usual places where I apply my concealer. And then using my Real Techniques setting brush, which I absolutely love for concealer, it's the perfect size. I just buff that in to the skin. I'm a little bit naughty with concealer, I get into a bit of a habit of just putting it in the same places and I kind of put it there even if I don't need it. But I usually get quite dark circles under my eyes and I get quite red around my nose. So I just focus it there. I sometimes take it over my lid as well, I do have quite dark eyelids. Um, I don't like to take too much because it does crease, but a little bit is quite good. It works a bit like a primer for eyeshadow. I have a bit of paranoia about dark circles. You guys probably can't even see them, but I always like to put a little bit extra just there. And then I just pat it in instead of blending, because then it kind of covers better. This brush is so good, especially for under the eyes, because it just fits right there where you need it to. Okay, so now I'm going to use a little bit of powder because both foundation and concealer are very moisturising, which means that you get lovely glowy, dewy skin, but it also means that it's quite kind of wet and if you want your makeup to last, it's good to set it all in place. So I'm going to be using my Bourjois Healthy Balance powder, which I've really been enjoying. I have the shade Vanilla. It hardly is a shade though, it's pretty much translucent. And I'm using my RMK brush, although I want to get another Bobbi Brown sheer powder brush that I use for brush, uh, blusher because I think that's really nice for powder. So I'm going to take a little bit, go under my eyes and on my chin and then a little bit on my forehead. Those are kind of the usual places. I don't put too much on my cheek area because I like that to be quite glowy. Okay, so now I need to bronze up my face a bit and I know it's quite strange to bronze and contour but I find that contour is quite cool and I need a little bit of warming up. So I'm going to take this nice big fluffy Haku Hodu brush that I got at IMATS a few years ago. It's so soft. I was using it for blusher before, but then I've started using it for bronzer, and it's so nice. I just put my bronzer in a three shape on the outer parts of my face, and you can see that it instantly just warms everything up. Take it down to my neck a little bit, just so my face doesn't end up darker than my neck, and slightly down my nose as well. If you want more of a kind of summer sun-kissed look, you can take it over your cheeks, over your nose, and over the other cheek. This is a bit more kind of sculpted. Um, but in the summer I really like taking it all the way over my nose. So now using my Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow Kit and the matching brush, I'm going to contour and highlight. I use this one pretty much every day just because it kind of does the job, I don't need to try any others. I just put this kind of in the triangle there into the contours of my face quite lightly. Um, I don't always contour, but when I'm filming I do because it really adds a nice kind of definition to the shape of my face. 
take up onto the temples. Nothing too harsh, very light hand. Just gives me a bit more cheekbone action. And then with this Zoeva brush, which is the 105 Luxe Highlight, I'm taking the lovely creamy highlight shade and just putting it to the tops of my cheekbones. You don't want to go too far down because it will give you shiny cheeks, but just on the top it will catch the light really nicely. For blusher, I'm going to be using the new Chanel blush that's coming out in their January Spring Summer collection. This is amazing and it has the most beautiful kind of floral embossing. This is the best thing from their new collection. It's so nice. It's just a really easy, rosy, everyday pink. I'm using my Bobbi Brown Sheer Powder Blush brush and just patting it onto the apples of my cheeks. It's very subtle, pretty. It's actually quite easy to build up though if you do want something a bit more pink. I'm just going to add a little bit. I can always go back and add more later once I've done the eyes. But the eyes and lips are quite pink, so I don't want to overdo it. Okay, so now I can go on to brows. You guys have seen me do this a million times. This is my Anastasia Brow Wiz, and I like to just brush them through and fill in the gaps. I'm lucky I don't need to do that much to my brows, um, but I do like to fill in the gaps just so they look a little bit more kind of tidy and neat. I'm also gonna use the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel, which is something I have to use every single day. Otherwise, my brows just fly all over the place. Okay, so now onto the eyes, and I'm going to be using the two Kiko eyeshadows that I bought from that haul. 220, which is a gorgeous light pinky shimmer, and 233, which is a darker cranberry purple. I absolutely love these shadows. As I said, I don't really have a palette for them, so they're a bit fiddly. But I'm just going to take this lighter pink shade and put it all over the lid. It's a pink with a lot of gold shimmer in it, so it really catches the light, and it's so pretty. Just taking a fluffy brush, this is the 221 from Zoeva. Is it Zoeva or Zoeva? I've heard people say both. Look how nice the shade is. It has that real gold hint to it. I love gold on the eyes. If you struggle to wear pink, I think this is a really easy way to do it. I'm also going to take that on the other lid. I'm then going to take the other eyeshadow, the kind of cranberry dark purple. And this eye look is really easy because it just uses two shades. I'm going to take a tiny bit of that to start because as I said, it's harder to take away than it is to add. So I'm going to take a tiny bit of that right into the outer corner of the eye. Start right in the corner and then blend into the centre of the eye. And I think this kind of purpley shade goes really nicely with the pink. And then I'm going to do the same on the other eye, right into the corner, little circular motions, and then bring it into the middle of the eye. I forgot to bring down my clean um, blending brush, but now what I would normally do, I'm just gonna take it off in the back of my hand, is use a cleaner brush just to kind of blend that out. But I'm gonna use a mix of the brush I have and my finger, just to make sure that line is really soft. And then taking a smaller brush, this is the Zoeva 231, which I really like to use under the eye, even though it's quite large. I'm taking that darker purple, starting from the outside. And underneath. If you start from the outside, then that's when you use most of the product. By the time you get to the inside of the eye, there won't be that much product on the brush. Okay, so that's the shadow done, and now I'm going to do some liquid eyeliner, which is always very hard to show on camera because I need to get really close to a mirror and normally use two hands, but I'm going to try my best to do it one-handed and holding the mirror in the other hand. Um, I'm using the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner, which I really like. I've done a blog post on my top three eyeliners. I don't know if it's gone up yet, but if it has, I will link it down below. I like the eyeliners that have kind of calligraphy type pens, so not felt, it's more of a brush. It makes it really easy to apply because it carries a lot of liquid in it. And I like to use my eyeliners on the side. I'd also say when you're buying a liquid eyeliner, look out for ones that have like a bouncy lid like this because that stops the product from drying out. I personally think it's worth investing in a good liquid eyeliner if you use it a lot. And I'll show you how I do my liquid eyeliner because I like to use the brush on its side. And I start from the outside and I just do from the outside to the middle. I don't try and do any fancy flick at first just keeping things as close to the lash line as possible. So I'm gonna use my little finger to rest on my cheek and then just draw a really thin line close to the lashes using the side of the brush. I usually stop around just kind of before the center of the eye um, because I have quite a small eye, so I don't wanna go right into the middle. So as you can see, the line I've done now is kind of thicker in the middle, so it's given me a droopy eye. So now I need to build out the outer part of the line. Just take your time, I think that's key. So that alone I think is quite a nice line, it's quite simple if you don't want to do a fancy flick. I think I'm going to slightly flick it but nothing too drastic. Do you know what, I think I might leave it there because I quite like the look of that line. Um, now I just have to make the other eye look the same, which is always quite difficult. 
Again, I'm going to lean on my face with my little finger. I like to leave my eyes kind of open and I just look down at a mirror. I really think using the side of the brush rather than doing it straight on is so much easier. And then keep looking straight ahead so you can see how they compare. Also, know when to stop. I always think if you keep going back to try and perfect it, you're going to end up messing it up. So, do you know what? I might leave it there. They're not identical, but they're sisters, not twins. So now, because I'm doing quite a nude lip and nothing too crazy, I want to really make my lashes look thick and long and voluminous. So I'm going to do a few little tricks to help with that. First of all, I'm going to line the upper lash line with a black coal eyeliner. I don't tend to wear a black hole on the inside because it shrinks my eyes, but on the top, I think it really helps make your lashes look thicker. This one's from Charlotte Tilbury. Her Rock and Coal liners are really soft, which is great for the upper lash line because it hurts, I think, if you get one that's too scratchy. I have no idea how to do this with one hand. Let's see if I can just do it. Normally I would hold my eye up and do it. I'm just going to try and go from underneath. It just takes away the skin colour that you can see kind of seeping through your lashes. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do to make my lashes look thicker and longer is use a lash curler. I used to only use these on special occasions, but recently I've been using them a lot because my lashes have just not been doing what I want them to do. And this really helps kind of prep them for your mascara. So you just get your lashes, carefully put them inside. Once you've felt that you haven't got your eyelid in there, squeeze really tight just for a few seconds and release. These ones are from Shuramura, which I think are the best lash curlers. Charlotte Tilbury also do some good ones, but if you just want to give it a go, go for a drugstore one. Um, although I think these ones do last a long time, that's why they're kind of worth the investment. Okay, mascara time. I'm going to use the L'Oreal False Lash Telescopic, which is, again, the one I bought in the haul video. Kind of funny brush, but if you take your time applying it, it gives really nice kind of length to the lashes and separates them nicely. Definitely no clumping. Clumping? Clumping. I like to do it really slowly so it's almost like you're brushing the lashes. Okay, that's mascara done. So now it's the final bit lips and I'm going to do a nice kind of soft pinky lip and to start I'm going to use the Revlon Lip Butter in Sweet Tart which if you layer it on quite thick it can be a really really bright pink but I'm just going to pat it on. These are really kind of moisturising. I like the shade because I think it's really brightening as well. So I'm going to pat it on and then kind of rub it in almost like a lip balm. And then on top of that I'm using one of the Tanya Burr lip glosses. This one is Lunch Date, which I think is a new shade and it's a really kind of nice nude. So I'm going to put that on top just to kind of mute it down a bit. The Tanya Burr lip glosses are really pigmented so you don't need to put much on. And once you do I think it's nice to kind of pat it in let it sink into the lips of it because it can go on a bit too thick. So that's the finished makeup look. I hope you like it. A kind of pink golden shimmery eye with a black eyeliner flick and pink lips. This is the look that I've been loving this month. So let me know if you enjoyed this type of video and if you want to see them monthly. And let me know what you thought of the settings as well because I'm a bit of a camera geek and I'd be interested to know if you guys liked it or not. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Bye.